everyone, apologies first of all for the state of my hair, um, I only just washed it because I don't have time to dry it so you're just going to have to put it on me looking like this, um, although the cat is joining us today so maybe she'll feature. Today's topic is digestion, it's one of my favourite topics, hey cat, oh say hey, look, can you see, let's see how long you can stay here. So today's topic is digestion, as I was saying it's one of my favourite topics. Um, the only real issue with it is there's a lot of very specialist words, but when you get to grips with those, I promise you're good to go. We're going to start by looking at the definition of digestion. Now, digestion is the breakdown of large insoluble molecules into small soluble molecules so that they can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Because remember, when you take food into your mouth and you eat it and you use it to give you energy, a lot needs to happen from the point when it enters your mouth until it can be absorbed through the walls of the small intestine into the blood. So we're going to start at the mouth. First of all, there's two types of digestion, physical and chemical. So physical digestion is literally just breaking large chunks of food into smaller chunks, but you're not actually changing their structure. Chemical is completely different. You're breaking down large pieces of food, but they'll actually become a new molecule. And really what we're talking about there is enzymes. So in the mouth, you have physical digestion because you obviously have your teeth and they're going to be crunching down so your molars will be grinding up the food, your incisors will be cutting down the food. However, at this point we get an enzyme released called amylase and that gets released by the salivary glands. And what that's doing is it's breaking down starch into sugars. If you're not very happy with enzymes, check out my video on enzymes because I talk about them in much greater detail. So from the mouth we pass into the esophagus, the food pipe, and at this point peristalsis takes place and peristalsis is literally the muscular contraction that occurs due to the circular muscles and what that does is it forces the food, the bolus, so that's the lump of food, down your esophagus into your stomach. So it reaches the stomach and we know that the stomach is full of an acid, hydrochloric acid, which has a low pH um, and, what's that's th and what that's there for is to digest and break down bacteria to basically prevent us getting ill. Obviously some food will contain such a high bacterial load that unfortunately our acid can't actually deal with it all, but primarily that's why the acid is there. At this point we have another enzyme released and that's protease. And as the name, gosh, cat hair's going everywhere, <sighs> can't breathe, can you stop being like that? I love my cat but I didn't realise how much hair she'd like shed, I know that sounds ridiculous. Anyway, so protease, as the name suggests, breaks down proteins into amino acids. So there's our large molecule proteins found in meats and pulses, and we're going to be making amino acids, which is small, absorbable, is that a word? Molecule. And at this point, our pH is going to have drastically decreased, so when the stomach releases the food into the small intestine, the food's going to be very, very acidic, and its pH will be around 3. Now, this is a problem, because at this point, we're having a load more enzymes being released. So there's going to be more protease, more amylase, but also the addition of lipase, and they're going to come from the small intestine and the pancreas. Now this is problematic, the low pH, because what will happen is these enzymes will all denature, which means that they'll stop working, and that's because the pH is so far from their optimum pH, which will be around 7. So at this point we have another very important substance release, which is called bile. So what bile does is it neutralises the stomach acid, and therefore increases the pH to around seven so that these other enzymes can work properly. Bile is made by the liver, it's very important that you remember that. It's stored in the gallbladder and then it's released into the small intestine. So try and remember those three stages. As I've already mentioned, its first job is neutralization of stomach acid, but it has a second very important role, which is emulsification. Now don't let that like worry you. All that emulsification means is it means breaking down large droplets into small droplets. The reason being is that by creating smaller droplets, you are increasing the surface area. And at this point, what we're really doing is we're, um, we're breaking down fat into smaller droplets to create a larger surface area for the enzyme lipase to work on. Remember, lipase breaks down fats into fatty acids and glycerol. Um, and it's a pretty rubbish enzyme, which is why bile is important, because it increases the surface area. If you're a bit confused as to why making smaller um, particles makes the larger surface area, because it is a bit counterintuitive. Just imagine having a lump of sugar and then weighing out the exact same amount in granular sugar, so grains of sugar, 
and then adding it to your tea. Now, I'm sure you know that the grains of sugar are going to melt much faster than the big lump, and you could probably time it. And that's just because they have a much larger surface area. Bile's role is very similar to washing up liquid. Now, we add washing up liquid to help break down the fats, because if you've ever tried to wash up like a buttery dish without washing up liquid, you'll obviously notice the butter gets everywhere, and that's because it doesn't mix properly with the water. Cat! Oh, so gross. Ugh. When do you stop molting ever? Right, so we talked about bile, um, we talked about our enzymes, and at this point, basically our food is pretty much all broken down, and we're moving into the small intestine, and we're going to get absorption of the digested food through the walls of the small intestine, so they can be, so it can be transported around the blood. The walls of the small intestine are very specially adapted for their function, and they have these things called villi, which are like projections, and what they do is they increase the surface area for absorption to make sure it happens much faster. And on top of each villi, there are microvilli, and they increase the surface area even further to make sure as much food as possible is absorbed through the walls of the small intestine. So we've dealt with our food. All that's left is the undigested food, so the fibre, which is why it's super important that you eat things like Weetabix, um, because that will keep everything moving through your digestive si system properly and stop you getting constipation. And then we get into the large intestine, and all that really does is absorb water and make sure that the end product is nice and, not nice and compact, but that it isn't like diarrhea basically. Gosh, it's a whole topic. Uh, so water is reabsorbed in the large intestine and then eventually all we have left is the faeces, which is stored in the rectum and released in the, via the anus. Um, again, I hope that was helpful. Big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Cat! Lyra says bye. Say bye. Look impressed. Okay then. She is very nice.